you take that option off the table when you go five units and up unless that person wants to get like commercial financing or something. But that's what's unique about a fourplex. Talk, Chase, and share it a little bit about fourplex and how it kind of merges with owner occupancy and, and what that looks like, where the two worlds come together. Um, so fourplex, four units. It's nice because you can still take advantage of that owner occupied or the, I should say the, the 30 year fixed conventional loan. And that's what most uh, homeowners are used to is that 30 year fixed. You're going to get the, the more favorable rate interest rate. Um, so you get, because you live in it, the interest rate you're going to get is lower than if you didn't live in it. Not necessarily. No, whether you live in it or not with that, with, with four units or four doors, or, or lower. When, you, when we start talking the, the five units or more, the, the bigger apartment complexes, your financing is going to change. Mm-hmm. You have to go commercial at that point. Yeah. That's not... So doing the four doors or less, you're being able to go residential, Fannie or Freddie, right? Okay. So that one investor left behind. What is that? What does that mean? Those are the different loan types that you're... Or I guess loan programs that you are allowed through your lender. Lower interest rates than something that's on commercial... Um, yeah, so it's more of a conventional loan. Like Chase was saying, you're going to do a 30-year fixed on something like that, which makes it, I think, more affordable for some people. You're a not conventional loan, there. yeah, the, the, the true 30-year fixed, that loan could be given to an investor that's not going to live in the fourplex or the triplex or the duplex or the home, right? One to four units. What if that investor wants to live in one of the units? Does that change it up? It does change it up, but it has to be a duplex. And at that point, they can do 20% down. If it's anything over, most lenders are going to require 20 to 25%. Yeah. 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 I mean, isn't that a lot of people talk about this house hacking concept? Yeah. Right. They they don't want to get commercial financing um, or they don't, or they want to put less money down. So they think if I go buy this duplex, move into one side, I can put a very small amount of money down, move in and live there for X amount of time and then move out and just keep the loan, which is a really, really great loan. Low down payment, lowest possible interest rates, right? Some people, I think, get into trouble. With that That's that's called loan fraud. If you say, I'm going to move into it and you never do, right? Not the most sustainable business model, although it doesn't stop some people from trying. Okay. And I like the house hack idea, but why not house hack a, a multifamily? Fourplex, duplex, triplex. I think that's a great idea too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it works well. And they're out there. I mean, for whatever reason, people, builders put up a ton of fourplexes in like the 70s and the 80s. And then they stopped for about 20 years, right? That'd I, be interesting to figure out why they did that. Yeah. You need to do that on another episode, just kind of dig into that. What, what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah. Did people want more land and so they wanted, that's why they went single family or what, what was I don't the thought know. behind that? I don't know. Because every, every city I've gone to, every market I've ever analyzed, and that's going to be an unintentional awesome segue to the next question. But they all have these little pocketed neighborhoods mm-hmm. of, you, you can tell this was built in the 70s or 80s, those boxy looking style fourplexes or garden style apartments. And they, yeah, they just built them like crazy. And then they stopped. We'll have to check into it. Yeah, yeah. we should. Yeah.